358 to handle. As you know, I need all the help I can get when we're singing together. Let's all stand and sing this. My, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Have you got it, 358? If you got it, say amen. Yeah. If you hadn't got it, say on me. <laughs> Give it a look. Time is filled with
Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. I tell you, it gets, it gets better when it gets in your eyes. <laughs> Hallelujah. If anybody has a tr problem with pride, you just let the Lord get in your eyes and touch you. And when your eyes leak, your head won't swell. And if it's swollen, it'll leak out. And I praise God that we can hold a God's unchanging hand. God's been burning this in my soul this week. And I want you to remind you of something. We who live in the eastern part of the United States remember the superstorm of 1993. It began as an innocent low pressure system in the Gulf of Mexico. Lasted four days. It touched 26 states with a vengeance. Hurricane force winds. Hurricane sized storm surges and, and 50 tornadoes. Waist deep snow drifts from Alabama to New York. Massive power outages. I remember that. Amen. Was anybody in that time that lived in that time that was out without power? Yeah. And I remember Dwayne and Laura Gillum sent their son and his mother-in-law also came to us in a four-wheel drive. There was a tree across the road they couldn't get by but as close as they could get we got out of the house it was waist deep we couldn't see what was the road the ditch the field and going down the April star was having trouble breathing and we made it down to the road Michael couldn't see what the, where the ditch was in the road the driveway and he stepped off in the ditch and it was way up <laughs> and he's not as tall as he, he wasn't as tall as he was, he is now. And I remember having a, them, them taking us to their house and letting us stay there. And even the water pumps froze at Rainbow City, the south side of water pumps froze. And they couldn't even pump the water to us. And we took water out of the swimming pool, broke through the ice in the swimming pool, and used that to flush the commodes. <laughs> Don't look at me funny. You have to flush them too. <laughs> don't ask me to come visit you if you don't. <laughs> and we had days of, of ice and snow, and I praised God that we could go home. They were gracious to us and good to us and fed us and treated us as royal as anybody could. But I was so glad to get to go home. There's no place like home. But as this short-lived monster killed 200 people, it was called a nor'easter. And we'll remember that word nor'easter because we're going to refer back to it. The scripture re refers to a similar storm in the book of Acts, the 27th chapter. It was similar because it was called Eurocleton, meaning northeaster. In the Bible, the book of Acts. It lasted 14 days and almost canceled nine books of the New Testament. They would not have been written if Paul and Luke had been killed in that storm. Luke, the physician, and, the, and Paul, the apostle, were on board a ship with 274 other, other people when they were confronted with a nor'easter. Paul wrote in Acts 27 verses 20 and 21 and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared no small tempest lay on us all hope that we should be saved was then taken away all hope that we should be saved was then taken away but after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. Yeah. It's like the little boy playing baseball out of the sandlot by himself. <laughs> and this man came up to him and said, Son, what's the score? He said, 
92 to nothing. <laughs> and the man said, well, it looks like your team has lost. And the man, the man said, it. and the boy said, no, sir, we ain't batted yet. <laughs> <laughs> 92 to nothing they hadn't batted. Or it's like this little, little person that said, this little boy, he said, I'm the greatest batter in the world. Then he tossed the bat in the air three times. He struck at it and missed and he struck himself out. <laughs> Striking at the ball that he threw up. He's shaking his head and he said, what a pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> to himself. Some of you can relate to that. It's been said we can live 40 days without food. We can live four days without water. Four minutes without air. But only four seconds without hope. It can happen. You can lose your hope. You must fight and you must pray and you must get in the word and you must seek God. All 276 passengers aboard this ship with Paul and Luke lost all hope. Man. They had no hope left. You say, well, I wouldn't have lost hope. You go 14 days, you're in a storm, your, your boat is tossed to and fro, gaining water, and the winds are blowing and the, the waves are raging, and they, have, they lost all hope. Hopelessness is a process that you go through. It doesn't happen all at one time. It's the trip between bad and worse. It's the last straw that breaks the back of hope. How could Paul lose hope in a measly 14-day storm? Paul had been dealing with long-term bad time for 15 years. It didn't just hit him in the ocean. He was dealing with it 15 long years. You say, well, I thought he had, had great times in the Lord. He did, but he also had times when people were not nice to him. Right. On your job, people are not nice to you sometimes. Some of you admit it, sometimes some of you just check there. And you have difficult times wherever you are. I've been in restaurants and complimented people working there. Well, so what? I said, help me, Jesus. I'm trying to bless these people. And they're practically cursing me. Fifteen years. He had his missionary journey behind him. He had loaded been loaded with stress and strain and struggle all these 15 years. He battled Satan constantly. Some of you can relate to this. And some of you are battling Satan right now. Between Acts 13 and Acts 27, Paul had completed three missionary journeys. He had written six books of the New Testament and five were to Galatia, Thessalonica, and Ch Corinth, churches with a death rattle in their throat. He received 39 strikes three different times. He'd been beaten with, with rods three times. Been shipwrecked three times before Acts 27. He spent 24 hours floating aimlessly in the ocean. He battled a thorn in the flesh which was a buffeting spirit from Satan. He'd been maliciously charged by church people. How could you figure that? He'd been placed on the Jews' most wanted list, dead or alive. Even the Jews hated him. He carried the weight of all the churches with him and on his person. Here are a few words that Paul wrote before this storm, this you're pleading in 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 8 and 9. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of, the, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. When you really get down to business with God, you're not going to have beautiful times of twiddling your toes in the river of life. You're going to have struggles. 
You say, preacher, you're not painting a pretty picture of Christianity. I want to paint a realistic picture of you and let you know you can be victorious, but you will fail, fall right in your face, except you pray and seek God with everything within you. Now we have the hell. serve him completely. Yes, that's right. You can't just run to him when you got a need or a burden or a trouble. When something happens wrong and bad in your family, you can't just run it to him then. You've got to be with him all the time yes. and love him and serve him in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Jesus is not a lollipop that you lick when you want to. Yes. Right. Amen. Jesus will be there for you. And some people will pray, well, well, I prayed and God wasn't there. Well, if I you and God we needed you. Amen. Hear them, Lord. Whoa. Maybe get a little hot in here. Hotter than it is now. The air conditioner is working good. The vans are working good. But what it is, the Holy Ghost is coming in here convicting some hearts of some Christians and He's wanting you to move up, get closer to the, the altar. Yeah. and the power of God and seek Him. Oh, help me, Jesus. You do, Lord. Help me, Jesus. God, please help me. You don't know what the Holy Ghost is putting in my heart to say right now. But I've got to speak what He tells me to speak. You do, Lord. Because when I stand before God, I want to be guiltless and without shame or sin before Him. Yeah. Some of you have a face on Sunday of Christianity, but all during the week, you're not where you should, where you should be, and you're not walking in the Spirit with Him. You're, walk, you're carnal because you're walking in the flesh and not in the Spirit. You're wondering why all these troubles come to you all the time. All, there's always some kind of drama in your family. Let me tell you what you got to do. Oh, God, help me. you got to get a hold of God and hold of God's and changing hands. Yeah. Turn loose of the world. Turn loose of the devil. Turn loose of the past of this world. And get a hold of the holiness of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, God. Holy, 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 holy ghost of God. Thank you, Jesus. Outside of Paul. We're fighting. And inside Paul, this is going to shock some of you, was fear. Yes, Paul had fear inside. He said, well, preacher, he was a man of God. 2 Corinthians 7, chapter 5 and 6. For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. But we were troubled on every side. Without, we're fighting. Yes. On the outside, within, were fears, Paul said. You yeah. didn't, Lord. He had to deal with the fighting outside and with the fears inside. Yes. Some people, just because somebody didn't shake their hand, they get mad at God in the church and stay out for months. Yeah. You haven't gotten the more of God in your life than a thimble. If you get offended at the least little things, you're not of God, you're not right with God. And if you die by right sin, you're going to hell. Amen. You say that's hard preaching, preacher. You need to hear hard preaching, but you also need to know that Jesus is coming and he's not going to take up people playing church. He's going to take up people who are born again. Oh, help me, Jesus. You see, this may be my last message on this earth. And I realize it. Because I'm going to preach like fire shut up in my bones because there's fire inside of me so much it's got to come out. And whenever it hits you, just run to the altar and get help from God. He said, nevertheless, God that comforts those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus. Titus came and blessed them, encouraged them, strengthened them. This is the Paul of Lystra yes. that was stoned, yet raised up to preach again. Yes. 
This is the Paul of Philippi who was beaten in jail. Yet praise God till the earthquake came and shook the prison and planted the church. Amen. This is a Paul who charged the Jews in Acts 18 chapter verse number 6. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. Amen. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. And God said in the preaching of the Gentiles, this is the Paul of Ephesus who led a Holy Ghost revival, then lit a bonfire in public and burned $10,000 worth of books of the occult in a main square Amen. to give God the glory. Some would say, well, I don't know if I'd go to that extreme knowing you wouldn't have the victory Paul had either. That's right. You got to do to get the victory like Paul had. You got to do what Paul did. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, somebody get in here with me. Help me. Don't you to imagine? Just try to imagine. And I love you. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't preach this way. And if you wouldn't love me, you wouldn't keep coming. Amen. And keep giving in tithes and offerings. Some people. Have Got mad at the Word of God. They thought they'd cut off their tithes and offerings and leave the church. It was a good thing they did because God double, tripled, and multiple, triple, tripled the church and the tenants. God multiplied the offerings and the tithes in the church. People that thought that they would, would just destroy the church, they blessed it with their absence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I found that God don't have to have me. He don't have to have me. I'll tell you a secret. He don't have to have you either. God was getting on pretty good without us. But I'm sure glad that He called us and drew us to Him. And I'm so glad that we're in the God's family. And we're in the kingdom of God that He loves us. Hallelujah. Won't you just imagine Paul year after year Crisis after crisis, physical suffering. Satan's messengers attacking him. That thorn in the flesh, that was the buffeting spirit of Satan. Lack of sleep, mental anguish, emotional draining. How many preachers are in here? Raise your hand. <coughs> Praise God. <coughs> Leadership struggles. People say, oh, it must be great and wonderful being a, a pastor. A preacher. Oh, I want to be in the spotlight, preacher. I want to get that glory. So much glory in being a pastor. All they got to do is preach Sunday morning, Sunday night. Most of them just preach Sunday morning. Wednesday night, have somebody to teach. Amen. And just fish and hunt all week when it's hunting season and fishing time. Amen. All I have to do is just twiddle the toes in the middle. No responsibility. No problems. No emotional anguish. No distress. I don't know who that is. That's one of these professional preachers that's not ministers. Responsibility of an apostle. He had to face rejection. Everybody didn't love Paul. False accusations. Among his own brethren, people falsely accused him. After all this, he's escorted on a prison ship. He's kicked in the teeth by a storm. No wonder Luke said we've lost all hope. How long can a Christian be bludgeoned before the light at the end of the tunnel blows out? <clears throat> it didn't come out too good. Let me say it again. Before the light of the tunnel, tunnel, tunnel blows out. How much can a Christian take? How, can the, how long can the holy be hammered before hope is nailed to the wall? No sun, no stars, no hope. It's over. Humanity alone doesn't deal with, with hope. 
Yes. Paul's words of advice in Acts 27 verse 9 and 10. Now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Paul tried to, to warn them before they left the shore. Yes. But they wouldn't listen to him. Hope cannot be found by looking within. Hope must be found by reaching up to God. Amen. Amen. Once we cave into negativity, there are no songs at midnight. Some saints are so negative. You're going to like this. Some saints are so, some saints are so negative. They brighten up the whole room when they walk out. Amen. I thought you'd like that one. Here, let me get my composure a minute here. He wasn't Chaplain Paul. He was chained Paul. Our purpose, our calling, our destiny often perishes when hopelessness squeezes us and squeezes the life out of us if it's possible. If it could happen to Paul, it could happen to every one of you. Right. Right. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Yes. No matter what. What about those people in Rome that need Jesus? Paul hadn't got to them yet. Would there be no prison epistles? Yes. Not if he died in that storm. There would have been no Colossians, no Ephesians, no Philippian letters. What about the two letters to Timothy? They would not have been written. What about the one to Titus? It would not have been written. The postcard to Philemon? It would not have been written. Where would the church get the, the doctrine uh, backbone of the New Testament? Is a storm going to do what that Satan and stones and whips and thorns and Jews and heresy failed to accomplish? No, no way possible. Amen. When hopelessness touches a saint of God, it never touches the Savior. Amen. That's right. Now that's powerful. That's why when hope arises up in you, Jesus is triumphant in the life of His children. He raises up hope inside of us, His eyes on the sparrow, and I know He watches me. Hallelujah. How much more when the saints are in the storm? When the saints of God, when you're going through the storm, Amen. Paul was finished, but Jesus had just begun. You say, well, you and I, preacher, are not on a prison boat, but we're on the lifeboat. Amen. Paul would write to the young Timothy a few months later to tell him the secret. 1 Timothy 1 and 1, if you'll look, read with that with me. 1 Timothy 1 and 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Amen. You that feel so hopeless, yes. Jesus is our hope. Go ahead and go to that next one. I want you to see this. Jesus is hope to cope at the end of the rope. How to soar when you're on the floor. His hope can get you up out of the casket at its own funeral and outlives his pallbearers. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to give us hope today. Uh, I see there's some storms going on out here. There's some storms in lives of people sitting on pews. If not you, it's the person right beside you. Somebody needs hope here. Hope cannot die as long as Jesus is alive. And Jesus is alive now and forevermore. Hallelujah. The next words after all hope was taken are these. Acts 27 verse 21 through 23. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of the end and said, Sirs, you should have listened to me, hearkened unto me, and have not loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and, and loss, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Yeah. Let me tell you, you 
you've got an angel that watches over you. Well, the angel of the Lord is camped around about them that fear him and deliver them. Right. Yes. He said, Preacher, I need hope today. Yes, amen. Well, I don't have it to give to you. Right. Okay. I can point you to the one that does. Yes. I can point you to the word that you can get in you. I've got hope in me, oh yes. yes but only God can give you hope that you need. He said, well, preacher, I'm going through a struggle. Who's not? Amen. Preacher, I'm going through a battle. Who's not? Amen. Amen. Lord. He said, well, preacher, I'm in the midst of the storm. In the midst of the storm. Hallelujah. <laughs> I love that song. There's hope in the midst of the storm. Yeah, yeah. When you can't see the sun shining, you can't see the stars, the moon, there's hope because Jesus is right on the other side that you can't see. Yeah. And He sends His angel to stand right beside you. Yeah, Hallelujah. Praise God. You're going to help us, God. What about it when the, the wind's coming, the hurricane's coming your way, and Scott's in a boat? I've used this before, this illustration, and you have. But I want you to understand did you know? When you have no hope, when it looks like you're going to die in a storm and a hurricane on the ocean, and it looks bad and everything's looking gloomy and dark, did you know that you can speak to the storm in the name of Jesus and it has to go over you, around you, somewhere to dissipate? God commands the storms. You command the storm. Amen. You've got the Spirit of the Lord in you. Amen. Amen. Let me preach it over here and get a few more <laughs> to believe this. I want you to understand the Spirit of Christ is in you else you're none of His. Yes. The Spirit of Christ is in you else you're none of His. Amen. Yes. You allow the Spirit of the Lord to rise up in you and you who are baptized in the Holy Ghost can speak forth the Word of God you can command the storm to be calm. You can command the storm to go over you and do no damage to you or your person or your home or family. Amen. Amen. Jesus, please help them to understand. Help me here. Now, I, I was thinking, I, I was hearing myself speaking the English language. Did everybody hear me speaking the English language? Amen. It's almost like I'm speaking in a foreign language that you don't understand. Yeah. You. Just can you say you? You. Yeah, you. Have. You. Have. The power. The power. To speak. To speak. To the storm. To the storm. And it has to cease. Yes, yes. In the authority of Jesus' name. In the of Jesus name. Hallelujah. Praise God. I've told it over and over. When that tornado was coming, it hit Shoal Creek. It hit, help me, over there. Webster Chapel. Hit all around. And I, I saw the devastation I had just laid trees down like this. Had logging over there, but it just cleaned the whole side of the mountains off. <coughs> but in our closet, you said, Well, why were you in the closet if you had faith in God? <laughs> well, where were you where were you at? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was out looking at the storm. <laughs> you, dumb, you should be to take your protection. <laughs> 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 Amen or oh me, something help. But you've got authority to speak. We were in that closet speaking to the storm. In the name of Jesus. Yes. It lifted up and went over the house. Uh, we heard it. It went over the house. Horrific winds that took lives, <coughs> took down timber, killed livestock, killed humans, destroyed churches and destroyed houses and property. But I praise God that you can speak to the storm. And it has to obey. Did I speak in English then? Thank you, Jesus. It's so powerful 
it's possible that I could have spoken in another language, but I, I thought that I spoke in the English then and told you that you have authority to speak to the storm. And I want you to understand clearly the storm you're going through in your life and your home and your family, your job, your finance, ever, your health and your family's health, everything you're facing. Yeah. You, you yeah. can speak yes. to the storm yes. in your life. Yes. And it has to be calm yes. in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the middle of that hurricane, Paul found in the eye of the storm the still place, the quiet place, the prayer place after long abstinence. Paul may have remembered some of the words of the Holy Ghost that he spoke to him and uttered to him in some of the earlier letters that he wrote in Romans 4 and 18 through 21, who against hope believed in hope. Even when it was against hope, against reality. Yeah. Praise God. Jesus. Had to check make sure it wasn't going too long. I was wondering why I lost some of you. Happy Jesus. <laughs> you you, you got to understand how you feel when I lose people. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, talking about Abraham. According to that which was written and was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered on his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. And he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Yeah. And being fully persuaded, Don't raise your hand. I, I want you not, please, not to raise your hand. But I wonder how many of us are fully persuaded that what He has promised, He is able, also able, to perform. Amen. God said it in His Word that whatever He speaks is. Yes. Whatever He said is. There's a count that said, Jesus said it, I believe it, that so. You can just take out that part about, I believe it, that so, because if Jesus said it, it's so. Amen. Amen. No matter if we believe it or not, it's so. Amen. Hallelujah. What Jesus said, the Holy Ghost said in this Word, it's so. And what He says in the Word, He will give you hope. He'll give you peace. He'll give you joy in the Holy Ghost. He'll lift you up and help you in everything you're living in. Some of you, oh God help me, some of you have been given a death sentence. Yes, Jesus. Hear me well. Some of you have been given a death sentence. Hear me well. Some of you have been given a death sentence in your life, in your home, your family, in your finance, in your health. My God. Yes, what has been spoken. God said some of you have been given a death sentence. But I want you to understand and see what the Word of God says. Yes. Jesus came to give you life, not death. He came to give you life and that you might have it more abundantly. Yes. Let me preach it over here. I've got to get some more of you. Jesus said... He came to give life and to give it more abundantly. Yes, he didn't come to give death. He said, I'm getting over here now. He came, Jesus came to give life that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, he didn't come to give death. Death is an enemy of God. Yes, yes. In the end, death is going to be cast into the lake of fire because he, uh, he's an enemy of God. He's not his friend. God does not sin the death. When somebody passes from this life to the next, yeah. God sends His holy angels. Yeah. 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 I want you to understand that if the death angel comes for you or your loved ones, you or your loved ones are going to hell. You yeah, them, Lord. Because God don't send His enemy for His children. God wants you to have life. 
Yes, and have it more abundantly. Amen. I've got more meat to put on the table. But I'll give you more than you can eat now. I want you to understand some of you have had a death sentence pronounced on you by the devil. And you have believed it. Please don't be offended at me. I'm going to tell you just like it is. I've got to. You know, I said this may be my last message. If it is, I'm going to preach everything that God gives me. If it takes me to 12 o'clock midnight tonight, I'm going to give you. And if you have to, to go eat, and I understand some of you have to, you, you can go and I won't be offended. But I've got to give you what God gave me to give you before you leave. You have got to receive life. The power of life and death is in the tongue. God wants us to speak and to have life and have it more abundantly. He doesn't want you to have death. He doesn't want you to have death. Say amen. He wants you to have life. Say amen. Hallelujah. Stand with me. Praise God. Ah, this is wonderful. This is a wonderful word. This is a wonderful message. And this that the Holy Ghost has preached is a great message that God's given us today. Yeah. Thank God for it. Thank God for His messenger, which is the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost messenger. He's a great messenger. He's a great teacher and a great preacher. My Father. My Father. There's a minimum of five that needs to be delivered from fear, bondage, from death. You have believed the devil's report. And if you keep receiving it, you will not live. Hear me, hear me well. I speak under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. If you keep receiving His words, you will die shortly. Have we got five preachers in this house? Come up here, preachers. Come up here and stand facing the congregation. Come up here and stand facing the congregation. You're a preacher. You come stand in the face of the congregation. If you're a preacher, come stand facing the congregation. Brother Joseph, you're a preacher. I know you're best, but you're welcome here. Two, four. Someone needs to stay in there with the children, do what you have to do. But we need this fifth minister here. Just explain to her we need her to pray right now. You five that the Holy Ghost spoke and said, You have got to have deliverance in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Come stand before one of these ministers. There's a minimum of five. There's more. But these five specifically, there's two. There's at least three others. Come stand up here and go a full bit. The devil spoke of death over these people. There's, there's two others at least. because it's for your benefit. The devil spoke of death over you. Go ahead.
ahead and start praying for him, brother. Start praying. Go ahead. You others that are here, the devil's out to destroy you. He's chosen to destroy you, and you know it. And he's trying to destroy you. It may be mentally, it may be emotionally, it may be with your health. It may be with your finances, it may be with your family. Others come.
epistles put together. There are 70 quotations from 14 Old Testament books that Paul quoted in his epistles in the New Testament. 70 quotations. Praise God for Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that it is. It is. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God that it is. It is. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Lord, I receive. I receive my deliverance. I receive the word of God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. 